Well, I'm ready when you are because I know there will be some takes flying and we're starting at one. Starting, starting at one. You know what it is already. I just wanted to know, first of all, is there a tier here? Yeah, there's a tier of two. Tier of two. Okay. So we started this again. This is the trade value column. John is saying the most untradeable player, the, the most n- nobody would every every person would hang up the phone that has a job in the NBA if they had this player and was offered anybody, including the second player on the list. And that player is Luka Doncic. Okay. And the number two player on your list? Gian- Giannis Antetokounmpo. NBA champion and two-time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. So he's 27 years old and won't be 28 until December. And Luka Doncic is, was he 23 or And 24? made it out of the first round once. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. If Simmons was writing this column a decade ago, he'd have Giannis one and he'd have, have Luka two. And his rationale would be the odds that Luka spends his entire career in, in Dallas are slim to none. He, we, I mean, it's been a little while, but like there were reports that he's eventually going to want to find his way to LA. The Mavs just fucked it up with Jalen Brunson. For all we know, Luka could be a year away from requesting a trade, even though he is on. I think year one of his extension. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I get all of that and I appreciate all of that. I am somewhat taking that aspect out of it. Um, he has four, four more fully guaranteed years where, so it's yeah. So he's four, four more years and then there's the player option. I am just looking at it from in a league where having the cheat code offensive player is more important. It's always been the most important thing, but it's, I would argue it's more important now than ever because we just witnessed a team win the championship that had a, they were good. They had a solid team. They had, you know, I don't know what, where you rank Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, Clay Tom, this version of Clay Thompson, this, ver, you know, Jordan Poole. I don't know where you rank all those guys on like your list of top NBA players, but they had one cheat code. And guess what? that cheat code was good enough to win them the fucking championship. And if he was younger, that cheat code would probably be number one on this list. Even though how Steph Curry's defense is fine. Right. Mm-hmm. So your argument, you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me, well, Giannis was, I don't know if he didn't, did he win a defensive player of the year or whatever? He won at the year. He won sec- his second MVP. Yes. There you go. Okay, great. So he is one of the five to 10 most impactful defensive players in the sport. Conservatively, Luka Doncic is not. At the same time, Luka Doncic, after getting quite frankly embarrassed in the first couple of games in the Phoenix series this year, you know what he did? He was like, "All right, I'm going to start. I'm taking this personally," and he took it personally. And guess what? He didn't hurt them defensively anymore. And when push comes to shove, he will be fine. And I think the offensive advantage for what he gives over Giannis and over every other single player in the sport, with the possible exception of, I guess, Steph, because Steph's shooting is just, I, you know, of a, of a different layer. And then KD, but again, KD's getting older. I think that the value of that offensive advantage and the fact that you cannot guard him, you cannot guard Luka Doncic, you could guard Giannis. I, you you could let him shoot threes. You could let him shoot long twos. You could let him, you could crowd the paint and you could let him take that, you know, eight, 10, 12 little baby. I don't even know what you want to call it. It's not a baby hook. It's more like a shot put into it's the It's like a mid range shot. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. You know, and like when you have Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton and maybe one other knockdown shooter on the perimeter, then the Giannis led Bucks become unguardable but you need those other things otherwise all of a sudden the bucks become not easy to guard but easier to guard luca there is no thing where you're like oh we'll just give him that and then we'll we, then we could survive you can't give him anything you can't give him a 35 footer okay so I got to take people behind the scenes for those that weren't on our town hall last night. Shout out to everybody on our town hall last night. Um, I this this conversation started then. Uh, I thought about what you said in as far as like 
Giannis counts by twos and Luca counts by three. Like that's the, that's the differentiation you're making. Um, I just want it acknowledged by you. They didn't stop Giannis at any point in the playoffs. Like the, the idea that the, the Celtics like stopped Giannis and they were guarding Giannis. He had 44 and 20 in Jason Tatum's best game of his life, you know? Right. Yes. Right. So that Completely. was, that should have been a, a the, the game before that he had 40 and 11 in a game that, but that turned the series and gave them home court and the game that you're talking about where Luca like carries teams and they win um, or carries teams. And because his teammates let him down and they lost happened to Giannis in game six. And we're both, I think we both acknowledge that if Chris Middleton doesn't get hurt, that Giannis has back to back titles. Can I throw one more at you though? Sure. The, the, uh, the, uh, by the way, the Mavs series with the Warriors lasted five games, correct? Yes. Okay. The Bucks in their five, in their seven game series against the Celtics mm-hmm. had a, with a healthy Giannis for all seven games, had a 99.7 offensive rating okay. against the best defense in the sport. But a team with Giannis on it and a healthy Drew Holiday and like, you know, they had some other. There are a couple other role players who can mm. theoretically do some stuff. Okay. Was held to an offensive rating that was below. I'm p- pretty sure it was below the worst offensive rating in the sport this year. Uh, yeah, the worst offensive rating in the NBA this year was 103.8 by your fighting Oklahoma City Thunder. The Bucks in the seven game series against the Celtics was four points below that. Now I understand playoff basketball is the different. playoffs. Yeah, what does that matter? It matters in the context of this specific conversation where we are picking the. Tiniest, tiniest. So of what would Luca's offensive rating? Have, what would what would Dallas's offensive rating have been if they had gotten seven games against Boston? So Dallas's offensive rating in their in their games against the, their five games against the um, against a different team like against that, the Warriors. Yeah, I don't who think you could comparable. argue who you could argue the Warriors aren't weren't the second best defense in the playoffs at the end of the day. I don't think that, but like there are two different teams is what I'm saying. These are two different scenarios. Like you would have to, to complete the, the comparison. You would have, you would need the Mavericks to play the Celtics in seven games. And okay, but just that for way. argument's sake, the Mavs in their five game series against the Warriors had a 112.2 offensive rating. My point is you can't, you can't stop Luca. Doncic, you cannot stop a Luka Doncic led offense if you give him just role players who could hit three. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. You can, you can slow down a Giannis led offense, and we just saw it. I just gave you the numbers. I I, res- I respectfully I, I think I, the, the pace had a lot to do with it. I think the those Celtics Bucks games were war. Whereas we saw throughout the, and this is more goes to why Steph is getting so many flowers throughout this playoffs. We saw how much the Warriors like had a lot of holes on that roster. They, they may during the regular season have had, you know, these, these numbers that the defensive rating that you're talking about, but we saw like, we sat here after game three, wondering how the Warriors were going to win another game against the Celtics. And Steph carried them to three more wins in that series. He needed Andrew Wiggins to contribute and Draymond to have like three healthy offensive possessions and he'd be okay. You know? And that's where I, it's where I just, for the sake of arguing on behalf of Giannis, and I'm not even turning this into which I that, do, by the way, I do it all the time. I right. did it during the playoffs. I think you could, should keep arguing it. The only Luca argument for me is that he's younger. Like that's the only. There's no like as far as the unstoppableness. Giannis is up there for me as far as like cannot be stopped. I don't think there is a, a a defense that you could say, slow him down. Luke would also didn't beat the warriors. So the idea that he wasn't slowed down come game five and game four and five of that series is revisionist history. Like I think that Giannis gave his all and gave him, gave the Celtics everything he could again, 44 and 20 at home in game six, and Jason Tatum had the game of his life. And then the Celtics like 
broke a record for three pointers I, in a game seven. I know that's why Giannis got eliminated. His teammate got got injured. Now the other argument that I could I could hear and and probably agree with is put Giannis on the Mavericks and then Luca on the Bucks. That's- and then what do the teams do? Now I'd argue that I don't see a team led by Luka Doncic winning a um, defensive dogfight that that Celtics Buck series was. So I'll just throw this one out there. Giannis's defense is really it's incredible. Mm-hmm. He he covers I mean, the entire. He's a. The, I liken it to Darrell Revis, where like well, the, a, a whole half of the field. Was yeah, missing, but like but there's his, also an air, the uh, a vertical level to Giannis's defense yes. that Revis doesn't have. But his, I don't want to say he's the best help defender in the NBA because there's some incredible fucking super smart like on the ball help defenders in the NBA. He's, but like you said, he covers ground. He covers mm-hmm. a lot of ground. He's not Kawhi Leonard as far as a defensive value add. Kawhi Leonard at his peak looked at the second greatest player of all time and said, Nope, you're not, you're not doing what you normally do. And how many guys in the history of the sport could do that? It's a short list. That's, that's where Kawhi, like when you talked about defense, defense adding value, that's where your real value, that's where your top, top, top. That's the only time your defense gets in the conversation in terms of value add as, as offense. In, in the same stratosphere. And I don't think it's, it, it, it can get there, especially the way the game is played now, where it's just so based on offense and what, you, what your best offensive players can do. Luca, again, is not the defender of the Giannis is no one, God knows no one would argue that, that, but like his baseline when he's trying is, is fine. He's a big body. He knows how to move. He knows when to move. Like when he gives a shit and he tries, he's fine. You know that. And you know, at the end of the day, it's like, Highest points per game, playoff history. Number one, Michael Jordan, 33.45 points per game. Mm-hmm. Number two, Luka Doncic. What's the sample size? 32.5. It, you know what? It's 20 check, check back with me in five years. It's not five games. It's, but this uh, isn't a list for what's the trade value for exactly 20, 27. And, and in doing so, I am projecting over the next several years when okay. I believe Luka Doncic is going to get the game's sample up and he's getting this, this number is going to keep going up. Oh, Buy it, but so we, we can't spend too much. I, we just, no, we, can disagree. Move on. I, we just I finally disagree. I think the, the calculation I'm making is that you, so would you say Giannis is the seventh best defender in the NBA? Or would you go higher than that? I, he's in, whatever, but it, again, tenth. it's 10th. It's, I'm asking you to put a number on it. Like if you just off the top of your head. No, but the number doesn't matter to me. The number doesn't matter to me because like I just said, he's not, you're not going to tell Giannis go cover LeBron or go cover Jason Tatum or go cover Steph or go cover Kawhi or go whoever, whoever that guy, go cover Kevin Durant. That's not Giannis as a defender. He can't do that. I mean, I'm not saying he can't do that, but like, that's not, He's not shutting down your opposed, like the best opposing offensive player in the NBA. Okay. Play out the exercise with fine. Would you, the would seventh you say best, seven? Great. Okay. Yeah. And Luca's the, let's just for argument's sake, say he's on when he's trying, he's the 45th, right? Uh, hundredth. I, whatever. Okay. I so Luca would be one in offense. Yes. Okay. Where's Giannis on that? As an offensive player in the NBA? Yes. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think he's top four or five. I, I don't. think. Okay. I, I value two point shots. Apparently one, two, three. Give him ahead. I mean, I'd put Jokic. I don't, I don't have regular top- season. I would have Jokic regular season ahead of him. I don't I would have, have my top five. Okay. So would you put him seventh for offense too? I think it might be closer to 10th for me, but yeah. Okay. So we have one and hundredth. Against seven and seven, how does Which that? Which is why nine... I didn't even want to answer the question because that's that's an unfair. It's it's a, it's equating defense to offense equally. Number one mm-hmm. and two, the the value of having number one 
in the offensive category or number two or even number three or number four, like the upper, 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 upper echelon guys in the offense category. And now if we're having a con- like Trey Young is going to appear on this list at some point, that is a different conversation because that the defense materially yeah. alters what you can do and what your ceiling is as a basketball team where that's not the case for Luca. And again, if Giannis were a guy that you can stick on like another another opposing team's best wing or best perimeter player and say go shut him down for a game, that's not Giannis, that's not Giannis's game. I mean, look, we're going to agree to I'm disagree. I'm not 100 sure it isn't. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. That's not. That's not how we. I, I'm just saying, like from the times I watch Giannis and like the games he gets up for. There's the the Brooklyn game that he had where he hit the three to break uh, yeah. Kareem's record. There's the there's the Sixers game where he took it personally that Embiid was getting MVP love and had the big block. Like I do think I don't think he does it for a full game like Kawhi or Prime Scotty Pippen did, or like Drew Holiday. Yeah, they, like they Drew have Holiday, that guy on the roster. They have that guy that is like the and get, you, you go guard him for the night. And but. guess what? If you're making your list of the top 15 to 20 players in the NBA. You know who a lot of NBA nerds would put probably around 15, 16, 17? Andrew Drew Holiday. fucking Holiday because he has that shutdown ability. And by the way, he's an offensive player. I don't know if he's the 25th, 30th best offensive player in the sport, but like he's good. You know, he can hit it off the triple three. I think so. Luka would be like two on my list. I think I just have for what I've seen Giannis do already. I think I have a little more, a little more emphasis on that. And the fact that like he's, he's 27 years old. You know, like know. If, if you're talking the next five years, are we looking at Luca having two more MVPs, but Giannis having two more titles? Well, I've I've already and then, said what I think Luca's. I, I know. So fine. You have five more MVPs and five more titles for Luca Doncic. No, I don't know about the titles. Years. I don't know about the titles thing. Charles Barkley never won a title. Elgin Baylor never won a title. So um, you have five more MVPs for Luca and five more second no, place I, finishes for Giannis. Look, I think. I'd put the over under on Luca MVPs personally. If I had, if you gave me a number that I would bet even money, I'd probably, I think two and a half is too low. I think probably three and a half. I think he wins at least three. That would be the under then. So you have at least four if the three and a half is too low. I'm not sure if I would say he's going to, I mean, four MVPs. I mean, there's been five, six. LeBron has. Five. Four. LeBron is four. So you LeBron have him winning the same number of titles as LeBron. Of, Kareem, uh, MVPs as LeBron. Kareem has six. Russell and Jordan have five. Right. LeBron has four. So you have Luca winning. Damn. So I, have Luka winning, is, I think Luca will win at least three MVPs. Yes. 